We've been talking a lot about health and fitness and about big food, its influence and its corruption of higher institutions. So we got a great guest standing by, Callie Means. He's the co-founder of TrueMed. Really caught our eye with a viral Twitter thread about how he personally actually helped to lobby uh, the NAACP and other groups in order to try and include sugar subsidies in the food stamp program. Let's put that up there on the screen. I even did a monologue um, on some of this. But Callie, we wanted to sit and talk with you a little bit about this. So first of all, all, why are you coming forward now? Uh, why is this something that you want to talk about? Uh, what has that inspired you um, in order to begin this discussion and to really become a fighter for exposing some of the in inequities and inadequacies in our food system right now and political corruption? Honestly, I had several experiences that I think a lot of Americans deal with. A close family member died of cancer and digging into that several years ago, my mother um, pancreatic cancer is highly tied to blood sugar dysregulation, highly tied to food. She was one of the 50% of Americans who was pre-diabetic or diabetic. And when you peel back the onion, diabetes, heart disease, dementia, depression, many of these elements that are hobbling the American people are highly tied to our broken food system, become very passionate about that issue and, and working to change that. And, th and that really brought me back early in my career, you know, working in politics, which inevitably leads you to consulting after the campaigns and sitting around the table with some of these food executives, some of these farm executives, and it uh, it brought back some some bad memories I wanted to speak out about because I, I believe our, our food system is rigged hmm. and our healthcare system stands by and profits from that. They stand silent. I think that's all very well said. Um, let's just start with the basics. What does uh, research tell us about sugar and uh, the amount of sugar that the typical American consumes and what impact it has on their health? Well, an average child right now is eating 100 times more sugar than they did 100 years ago. This is evolutionarily unprecedented. And, you know, the foundation of our diet, and, and it's really taken me a while to even understand this. We know our diet's bad, but the foundation is added sugar. It's processed grains. And processed grains didn't exist until 100 years ago. The processing totally changes it. It takes the fiber off, you know, so it's shelf-stable, but there's almost no nutritional value. That turns into glucose in the blood as well. It's hidden sugar, so it becomes addictive, you know, and very metabolically unhealthy. And then the third thing is seed oils. Uh, you look at any label of any food, even if it's organic, healthy food, it's canola oil, soybean oil. These were also invented in the last hundred years, uh, really propped up by grain subsidies and the, and the food subsidies, highly inflammatory, highly processed. So our, our diet has become much cheaper. We spend about half on food as, as other developed countries um, and, you know, a lot of processes that are illegal in other countries. You know, this isn't from a free market, it's from a rigged market. Um, and that's leading to 25% childhood prediabetes, 50%, as I mentioned, adult prediabetes, diabetes, 93% of Americans right now have metabolic dysfunction. And that's the basis of disease and why we're seeing an increase in so many conditions, both large like fatigue and depression. You know, 25% of Americans right now are on a mental health, health medication, which is just kind of hard to wrap your head around up until increases in you know, heart disease, diabetes, those, those things that are actually leading to a lowered life expectancy for the longest period since 1860 in America. We're, we're actually dramatically seeing you know, life expectancy lower right now, which doesn't make any sense. Yes, exactly. And it's like not just a COVID story. It's been happening now for quite some time. Been tracking it here for a while. Can you talk specifically about the political That's machinations right. that big food used? You know, you can talk specifically about the NAACP example that was one from quite a while ago, but sure. there's an ongoing problem uh, right now in terms of big food leveraging political conditions to try and create subsidies for government programs and dupe the American public. Yeah, well, I think my experience in 2012 really actually ties very well today. So just real quick, the playbook I saw in 2012, as you as you pointed out a couple of days ago, was there's a three-part playbook. We went directly to the NAACP and the Hispanic Federation, very respected civil rights groups, and it was a quid pro quo. Coke paid them millions of dollars, and they labeled the opponents racist. There's a tweet in the New York Times that I, that I put out for contemporary from 2012 where it talked about this, and that shuts down debate. And then conservative think tanks, you know, I grew up conservative, I, you know, um, wanting to change the world. I, I interned at the Heritage Foundation like a like a good young conservative does. And I was despondent to see that we would walk in with soda executives, farmer executives, the Heritage Foundation and ordering a slanted study was very transactional. And then the most important, I think, is research institutions. Coke and processed foods spend 11 times more funding nutrition research than the NIH. And that's led to you know Harvard study saying sugar doesn't cause obesity that led to the disastrous food pyramid. But it actually ties to today. Now the uh, preeminent study from the NIH and Tufts Nutrition School, you know, 
it says that uh, Lucky Charms are three times more healthy than beef and systemically overrates processed food versus whole food. And that's going into childhood nutrition guidelines today. And I think where this circle is completely finished is, is you have pharma profiting. Now, of course, you have pharma who, who and in the health industry who said nothing about 10% of food stamps funding going to diabetes water, now pushing the American people to pay for an injection, a weekly miracle obesity cure for 40% of US teens. 40% of teens right now are obese, according to the CDC. And we're being told by all of our elite medical you know, apparatuses that we need to give them this miracle curl, which is a weekly injection for the rest of their lives. They, they're not able to stop it. Of course, that won't stop them eating inflammatory food, which damages their cells and will inevitably do a lot of other diseases. What do you think are solutions here? Uh, I remember back a while ago in New York City, there was an effort, I believe, under Michael Bloomberg to just like ban large uh, vessels of soda, like the big gulp level of soda outright. There was a big uh, public education campaign. They had all these like very uh, provocative sort of ads on the uh, subway and other places showing how bad for you sure. soda ultimately was. But what do you see as a, a potential solution? Because, I mean, his effort to ban big gulps led to this huge culture war backlash and nanny state conversation and all of that. So do you think that's the right approach or do you have other approaches in mind? No, I, I, I listen, our kids are, are really under threat. I think any parents sees that and, and, and that's why this tweet resonated. Now, there's a couple things that I think are absolute by no brainers. And I think this is the bipartisan issue of our time. So first on, on not even in the political sphere, I think Bill Ackman, you know, spoken out about this, retweeted what I what I put and said, you know, billionaires need to start funding, you know, class action lawsuit because, you know, the only difference between what the soda companies and the cigarette companies have done is sodas an order of magnitude worse. I mean, what the, what these companies have knowingly done, and the the devastation they brought on, the, on really just the cells of our of our children, which has led to mass dysfunction. So I, I think that's a that's a private sector route. Um, I think you I've interestingly been contacted by members of Congress on the left and the right. I think you have both on the left and the right this new crop of of members of Congress who are aren't as tied to special interest, a little bit more on the populist wing. And, and, and they're actually joining the ad committee and joining, you know, really passionate about this issue and want to call Coke and Pepsi executives in. And then before we even talk about taxes, before we talk about bans, I'm actually a libertarian. I think all drugs should be legal. But I, or most, but I don't think we should be paying tens of billions of dollars to subsidize them for kids, um, mm -hmm. which is what we're doing. So let's reform food stamps. Again, that, that's, a, that's a program that 15% of Americans depend on for nutrition. 10% of it goes to sugar water, right? And let's talk about the grain subsidies. The grain subsidies are the absolute, I believe, most evil and nonsensical public policy in America. We are subsidizing, right, the grains and the corn, which turns into high fructose corn sugar, sugar, that's weaponizing our food, that's directly leading to trillions of dollars of downturn medical costs to the American taxpayer. So it's like it's like we're paying for it and then literally paying trillions of dollars to the point that it's literally going to bankrupt our country. You know, it's 20% of healthcare spending now. But healthcare is the fastest growing and largest industry in the United States. And that's not slowing down. And we're subsidizing that. And then the last thing, just real quick, is we've got to just ask from an incentive perspective. The problem with healthcare is that 95% of costs are interventions on people that are sick. That's how healthcare works right now. Every single institution is incentivized for more Americans to be sicker for longer periods of time. Now, I don't think there are that many evil people in the system, but that's exactly what's happening. Incentives speak, it's larger than any one person. Mm -hmm. So, you know, my company is interested in this FSA, HSA, these tax free accounts give consumers choice. You can actually use those for healthy food and exercise. Um, which is where we need to get to. We need to actually, you know, subsidize and incentivize with healthcare policy real root cause cure. So I, I think reforming and expanding HSA for this consumer choice and, and, and steering people to, to do root cause solutions is very important too. Yeah. Well, we really appreciate you joining us, Cal. It was a very informative segment and uh, we appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thanks, man. Thanks a lot. Okay, guys, thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate it. We've got a great CounterPoints show for all of you tomorrow, then Breaking Points on Thursday. Don't forget about the live show tickets and all of that. Uh, and enjoy the show. It's fun to have CounterPoints on Wednesdays. I like it. Yeah, indeed. Love you guys. We'll see you Thursday.
Hey guys, ready or not, 2024 is fully upon us now, and Sagar and I have been brainstorming ways that we can really up our game for this critical election. Yeah, we rely on our premium subs to expand our coverage, to add staff, to upgrade the studio. We just want to give you the best independent coverage of this election, which is possible. So if you can help us out, become a premium subscriber today, breakingpoints.com, or the link is down here in the description video. It really means the world to us, and if you like what we're all about, this is the best possible way to keep us 100% independent, working only for you.